This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. At least 65 people in nine states are sick after eating eggs infected with salmonella. Public health and agriculture officials have traced the source to an egg farm in Wisconsin. The eggs were distributed to Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan under labels like Milo's Poultry Farms or Tony's Fresh Market. They've since been recalled. Authorities in Two Rivers are investigating the remains of a human skeleton. They're not confirming or denying that it could be Elijah Vu. The three-year-old boy has been missing since February. The sheriff's office says a deer hunter found the remains. The sheriff says he cannot provide specific information about details for now. A man is charged in the shooting death of UW-Whitewater student-athlete Kara Welsh. Chad Edwards of Loves Park, Illinois, made his initial court appearance Friday. He's charged with first-degree homicide. It would take a million dollars to bail him out of the Walworth County Jail. Donald Trump has denied knowing much about Project 2025, but he embraced one of its key provisions at a Saturday rally in Mosinee. We will ultimately eliminate the Federal Department of Education and send education back to Wisconsin and back to the state. Project 2025 is a sweeping action plan for the next Republican president to overhaul the government. Last week in Wisconsin, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona warned public schools are under attack. Democrats are literally going to New Heights to warn about the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025. Airplanes pulled banners over college football games here in Wisconsin and another key swing states this weekend. Donald Trump denies having a direct connection to Project 2025, but he has embraced some of its key ideas. A new study finds people in rural Wisconsin feel better about drinking raw milk than people in cities or suburbs. Sean Patterson led the study for the University of Pennsylvania. Pasteurization doesn't change the nutritional value of milk. It doesn't significantly change the taste of milk. And so the risks really don't outweigh any of the benefits. Untreated milk has been linked to illness outbreaks. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. This is news from WMDX Madison. I'm Savannah Tome Olson. The first full week of school for kids in Madison begins today, but a post was circulating social media scaring families. Apparently, there was a threat that mentioned Madison schools referring to a school shooting. Madison police say multiple people saw it and called them. They say along with the school district, they jumped into action. And their first big discovery was that this post came from Florida. And the poster was talking about Madison County schools in, you guessed it, Madison County, Florida. They got in touch with police there who are now investigating that threat. Authorities there ended up arresting a 13-year-old they say made that post. Now Florida authorities are trying to determine whether that kid acted alone. MPD believes there is no threat to the safety of students here in Madison, Wisconsin, but they understand why families would be nervous. They have added patrols around MMSD schools today just as a precaution. So you may see some additional squad cars that doesn't mean something's wrong. Madison police are cracking down on drunk driving. Last year, MPD arrested 595 people for operating while impaired. They've arrested more than 440 this year so far. According to the Cap Times, they've already arrested more people this year than they did in 2020, 2021, and 2022. Officers told the paper they're ramping up these efforts to discourage impaired driving. Wisconsin has the highest rate of alcohol-related driving deaths in the Midwest. Here in Dane County, 38% of traffic fatalities involve alcohol. And gas prices fell over 10 cents per gallon over the last week. The average across the state today is 306 a gallon. That's 36 cents lower than a month ago and more than 53 cents cheaper than this time last year. In Dane County, the average price today is 316. These prices should keep dropping as we head into fall. One of the busiest thoroughfares to downtown Madison now has some lane closures. Thousands of people take John Nolan Drive to work every day. Starting today, parts of one lane each direction are now closed. Crews are working on rebuilding Olin Turville Court and a section of East Lakeside Street. And staff in the traffic division will see how this goes to help them decide whether they could reduce lanes on John Nolan permanently. Plans are in place for an overhaul of the road in 2025 and 26 as part of the Madison Lakeway project. These closures will last almost two months. 
And you can ask city leaders questions about the Madison budget this week. They're using the format Beloved on Reddit, Ask Me Anything. That means you can log on and ask any question you have about the upcoming Madison budget. One of the biggest topics will undoubtedly be the $22 million referendum on the ballot November 5th. That AMA, as they're called, is all virtual. It's Wednesday from 5.30 to 7. You might want to check the eggs in your fridge. A salmonella outbreak has gotten more than 60 people sick. And Centers for Disease Control and Prevention staff say these eggs came from a Wisconsin farm. Officials say they're from Milo's Poultry Farm in Bonduelle, that's north of Green Bay. The cartons were sold in Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan under the labels Milo's Poultry Farms or Tony's Fresh Market. CDC staff say many more people likely got salmonella from these eggs, but they were able to recover on their own, so they just never knew they had salmonella. And the old Morrisonville Elementary School in DeForest will someday be a dance school. Tony LaBurge bought the building in 2021. According to the Sun Prairie Star, he's renovating a three-bed, three-bath home for himself on the top floor with a commercial dance studio on the lower level. He told the paper he plans to call it Frog Manor in honor of Morrisonville's reputation as Frogtown USA. And that's what you need to know. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. This is WMDX News. The Brewers get set to head west. Hi, I'm Jimmy Cusco with sports filling in for Mike Clemens. After dropping two of three games to the Rockies and having won just twice in the past seven games, manager Pat Murphy said that it was a tough homestand for his team. You know, it was a tough homestand. And we've had games like this. If you looked at the St. Louis series, we had games just like this where once we something didn't go our way, we didn't. We didn't produce right. We didn't fight back right after that. Milwaukee will set out on a six-game road trip out west beginning tomorrow in San Francisco. They'll play Arizona this weekend. The Brewers are still nine games up in the NL Central with 19 games to play. On Sunday, it'll be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Indianapolis Colts as each team seeks its first victory. For the Packers, they will be without Jordan Love, who is expected to miss at least three weeks with an MCL sprain. Malik Willis, who the Packers traded for in the preseason, will start this week's game. The Athletic reports that Green Bay has reached out to free agent quarterback quarterback Ryan Tannehill as well. On Saturday, 2-0 Wisconsin Badgers football will take on Alabama. That game will kick off at 11 a.m. Filling in for Mike Clemens, I'm Jimmy Cuska with Civic Media Sports. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Standing ovations are not uncommon at film festivals, but a nine-minute standing ovation is. That's how long the crowd at the Venice Film Festival clapped for Daniel Craig after his performance in a movie called Queer. The film is based on beat writer William Burroughs' novel from 1985. Craig plays an American expat living amongst a small group of Americans in Mexico who starts a relationship with Stark's character. The film is scheduled for release in the U.S. on October 6th. The new season of Dancing with the Stars is right around the corner. Some of the stars that will be dancing, as revealed on Good Morning America, include 90210's Tori Spelling, former NBA player Dwight Howard, kind of a reach, Pretty Little Liars Chandler Kinney, Bachelorette star Jen Tran, model Brooks Nader, and actor Eric Roberts. And finally, a reason to watch Dancing with the Stars. Season 33 of the show premieres September 17th on ABC. Michael Douglas would like his real name back, which is Michael Douglas. 50 years ago, when a young Michael John Douglas, now known as Michael Keaton, burst onto the Hollywood scene, his name was already taken with the Screen Actors Guild by Nepo Baby Michael Douglas of Wall Street fame. Now, according to People magazine, Keaton wants it back, or at least a derivation thereof. The Beetlejuice Beetlejuice star from now on plans to go by Michael Keaton Douglas. The grieving process appears to be over for the band Linkin Park, seven years after the death of lead singer Chester Bennington. The band has a new lead singer, new material, and a tour in the works. Replacing Bennington on vocals will be Emily Armstrong, formerly of the band Dead Sarah. Chester Bennington took his own life in 2017. Linkin Park's new album is expected to drop November 15th of this year. In Jeff Bridges is one of the coolest guys ever news, Jeff Bridges is one of the coolest guys ever. Aside from having an excellent reputation as an actor and overall cool dude, yes, that's a reference to The Big Lebowski, actress Winona Ryder said Bridges refused to kiss her during her audition for the film Fearless. The Stranger Things actress said at the time Bridges was 43 years old and she was 21 years old. Bridges said he didn't want to kiss her because she was the age of his daughter. Further expanding his legend of coolness, Rosie Perez, who appeared in Fearless opposite Bridges, was worried she would not get cast because of the interracial element. Perez says Bridges went to bat for her and she not only ended up getting the part, but drew an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Ryder is a two-time Oscar nominee herself. Her most recent film, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, opened up this past weekend. And as far as Jeff Bridges goes, the dude abides. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba. Weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network.
It is going to be mostly sunny today with a high in the upper 70s to low 80s this afternoon. Tonight, mostly clear. We'll drop into the mid-50s tomorrow. Almost exactly like today. Sunshine, upper 70s to low 80s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 61. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio.